Hi everybody, I'm Severely Mame, and today I figured I wanted to talk about what my inspiration for my summer and spring wardrobe of this year is going to be. Now I know what you're thinking. A huge snowstorm just happened in New York City. Uh, it has been freezing cold all over, and why are you thinking of summer? Now, I live in Arizona, so it is already reaching 70 degrees fairly regularly, and the sun is shining. So my summer is much sooner than everyone else's, and also because I like to make a lot of what I wear, this gives me a lot of time to do the planning and the making of things that I'm going to wear for the spring and summer of 21. Now, what is summer of 2021 going to be like? Probably like summer of 2020. You know, we spent a lot of time indoors and with the people we lived with. And even if that's the case, I want to be doing it in a new summer wardrobe. I mentioned I live in Arizona. It is hot here during the summer. Right now, it's notably hot in my bedroom where I'm filming and I had to turn off the fan for the audio and have a studio light on. And it's not even much warmer than 70 degrees today. So I need to, to come up with what I'm going to wear that can be fashionable and vintage style, but also be cool weather. Now you know I have an affinity for vintage suits. I usually am wearing one. Today I am a little warm. I just put on a Freddy's of Pinewood t-shirt. Well, it's not a t-shirt, but jersey shirt. Um, and uh, I'm doing a bunch of things running around and all of this around the house because I don't leave the house anymore like none of us really should be regularly. Um, but all in all, I'm just trying to figure out how I can have a fashionable but cool summer wardrobe uh, for whatever the summer of 2021 will bring. Now, I, every year I kind of have an idea of what I want to do. Last year it was kind of this 30s gender punk idea and I had like a cute little haircut and made some like femme dresses that I paired with like harnesses and belts that were bulky. I can show you like my favorite outfit from it all here. But I kind of gave up on making that wardrobe a reality when the pandemic was really hitting and we knew it wasn't going to end anytime soon. This year, I'm ready for what's going to happen, which is just being at home and getting dressed for myself. Uh, and, you know, it, it does help to live with a partner who always tells me that I look cute whenever I get dressed in something. So it gives me another reason to get dressed because I love compliments, as I think um, all of you might have assumed by the fact that I have a YouTube channel. All I want is attention. <sighs> Whatever. Um, but yeah, so I figured this summer, I about a month ago, I kind of started planning. It's now February something. It's like the beginning of February, first week of February. Um, and yeah, I have been uh, like looking up inspiration for about a month of what I want uh, my wardrobe to be for summer. And I have to start soon. So where it all started was when I pulled out all of my Christmas clothing, I had one dress that wasn't packed away in my Christmas stuff, but I usually wear a lot during the Christmas season. Now Christmas here is not super cold. It's usually like in the 50s maybe. Um, so... I can incorporate summery pieces into my Christmas wardrobe if they look kind of Christmassy. Uh, so my inspiration for uh, summer this year is this vintage dirndl style dress that I got at a Buffalo Exchange a couple years ago. Um, I can't exactly figure out what the dating is on this. I'm going to guess late 50s or 60s. Um, it may, it could be 70s. I really don't know. It has a metal zipper, um, all of the, like, it's like snaps and things like that. 
that all existed for so long in the world of sewing that I can't particularly date that. The cap, the fabric is cotton and there's, um, there maybe was elastic in these sleeves. So that could help me maybe kind of set a date a little bit. Um, but I, yeah, I think all of it is cotton, but dating it doesn't particularly matter because the style is what's inspired me. I thought this would be nice because I'm like, oh, you know, I could make and find dirndles that are cotton and then I just wear light uh, cotton like peasant style blouses under it and it's light and it has um, light colored layers that can you know easily be washed like I can wash this shirt or this dress has the shirt built in it's a, has like a snap panel um, and then I undo the hooks and the zipper and that's how I get in and out of it um, but I'm planning on making the blouses separate. Uh, and then that way, like, I don't have to wash the dirndl dress every day, but I can wash and make uh, multiple blouses that I can swap out, which during the summer months is gonna be really helpful here in Arizona because it's so hot, I just sweat a ton. That is one, one feature about me that I don't particularly love is I am a sweaty, sweaty woman. Um, but I think that this will help me with that. The, I can make cotton and, uh, natural fiber dirndls and do whatever embellishment or embroidery on I, like I want on them. I don't have to do any, but I can make them and use it as a good way to keep cool for summer. So with that idea, I started kind of like collecting images on Pinterest and, uh, going through pages on Etsy of all different things that I wanted to build and make into my wardrobe. Now, I have another piece. Embroidered blouses, like peasant style blouses, was something else that I was like, oh, this is an easy addition to um, make like really dress up pieces and stay summery. So when I got the 100 pounds of vintage clothing, I received this like 70s embroidered top that should be about my size um, and it has a little bit of damage. It's not as old as I like um, when it comes to vintage but what it is is a great like embroidered vintage natural fiber piece which is all I was really like needing essential wise. So this came in that collection. If you haven't seen the video of my 100 pounds of vintage, I will link that in a card right now. So you can watch that um, and see all of the other things I acquired. This didn't even make it into the video. Um, but yeah, so this is a good, was also like an inspiration piece to like set me on the making of all of this. Now, for years, I've been looking for a like reliable dirndl pattern. So like so often I was looking for them and all I was finding was like costumey pieces, things that would not look like authentic folk wear, but just look like a costume of folk wear and I didn't want that. But I finally located a pattern that I thought looked good and I'll link that down in the description of this video. It's from a seller on Etsy. They have a good size range. Um, so I was excited to find this and was like, okay, this is the summer. I will finally just make myself a bunch of dirndl and be comfy and flowy for summer. Now, once I hit like 25, I've been collecting vintage for a long time, probably over 10 years. When I hit 25, I pretty much stopped wearing full skirts. I felt like they were too young looking for me. And I found that a 40s shape fit my frame better. Um, so I don't wear as many full skirts as I used to, but in the summer, all of my pencil skirts are wool and like some nice gabardines that I don't particularly want to sweat in. So to have some nice full cotton skirts um, and skirts on dirndls, I think it will be really nice to have something flowy versus tight. Um, and yeah, maybe go out of my comfort zone for the last few years. I had that Wanda Woodward, I wouldn't be caught dead in a full skirt moment. Um, but now I'm feeling less worried about that. Um, I think that in my head, they were like too young looking. And I, you know, um, what's the phrase? 
Mm -hmm. I think that would be the theme of your wedding. Mutton dressed as lamb. Mutton dressed as lamb. I was kind of feeling that. It's like when I try and do the collegiate look. Like that 40s collegiate look is so cute. But I really feel like I'm trying to dress younger than I am. And that it like really shows. But I, I know that with dirndls it's not going to be the case. So through finding this pattern, which I, like I said I will link down in the description. I realized that this gives me a wealth of possibilities. I can take this princess seamed kind of classic dirndl pattern and alter it into being all kinds of kind of folkwear garments. To start keeping it as a dirndl, I can alter the neckline to match more vintage ones that I've seen. I can do all kinds of embellishments around them, make it all of all kinds of colors and do various kinds of like embroidery and embellishment to make really fancy nice ones or just really easy throw it on because I have to run to go to the store kind of thing. I want it to be classic. I want to make matching aprons for things because I love wearing aprons like outside of the kitchen. I think that it's really nice to have like a big central pocket instead of having to like worry about a purse. I can like run out of the house and just throw my wallet and my like phone and things into an apron pocket and go do what I have to do without have like I can have my hands free which in the summer is nice because that way I can hold a parasol to keep the sun off of my skin because I burn and for some reason have relocated to the desert but I don't think I've had any notably bad sunburns because I know to just stay out of the sun um but yes so far I have a lot of plans now I want to show you some of my um inspirations that I pulled from Pinterest. Now, I think that a lot of these, they don't look too young. Um, they can be worked into very like classic feminine silhouettes and they don't like have a particular age group. I don't know if that's because you see it more as like folk wear and less as like, you know, young or old person dress. Um, but I really love how this style had influence in the 30s and 40s outside of like Germany and uh, like Bavarian places. I think that you can find a lot of patterns from the 40s, like 30s, 40s, 50s with the influence. So that's been really exciting just going through Pinterest and looking for images. Um, there was one with that like had a little 40s box coat with cute little like piping and embroidery and it had that very classic look. But it wasn't specifically just a dirndl and a peasant blouse. Um, speaking of peasant blouses, I have been trying my darndest to find a pattern for the like late 30s into the 40s uh, smocked blouses um, where the entire like neckline would be smocked and done with like multicolor embroidery and things like that. And I know McCall's printed those patterns in the 1940s. I cannot find one in my size at all. Now what I did find was a like 1940s like mommy and me outfit little booklet that's a PDF available for download. I will link that also in the description of this video where it gives you directions on making like mommy and daughter like little dirndly skirts which I am going to use that skirt uh, idea too. But it says that it would have the smocked uh, neck blouse. And I'm going to try and see if I can figure that out. I've also been like look, trying to look at how others were made to see if I can do it. Like I know that my shoulders are a 17 inch width. So I probably wouldn't be able to find one of these patterns that works for me in general. So I know that I just have to figure out like what the general shape of them are and how it's done. Um, and then obviously be sharing that with you guys because if I've had this much trouble finding any information it's you know you guys probably don't have as much unless you're in possession of one of those patterns that I really would like um, and if you do please send me photos or send me the pattern that would be great I would really like that um, but yeah I have a lot of plans for different things that I'll make but I just want to do this video as like an it like where I'm getting my inspiration for what I want to make for the upcoming seasons. I've been, I think, like, waiting for there to not be a holiday project. You know, like, come August, there's my birthday, and then I start sewing for Halloween, and then once Halloween's over, I'm sewing for Christmas, and then once Christmas is over, I'm usually finishing up gifts that I'm making, 
And then finally, I get time to kind of work on whatever I want slash some Valentine's Day things. This year, I didn't make anything for Valentine's Day, but I might try and squeeze in one Valentine's Day dirndl, which if I do, I'll make a video here to show you guys me using the new pattern that I found. Now, I think that I want to just show you some of my inspiration, like pictures that I've gathered. And I'm just going to show you those uh, here so you can get a feel for what I'm thinking for the spring and summer of this year. Isn't that all just like so, it's like cute and feminine, which I really like, but also looks very cool, uh, be, like physically, weather-wise, because it's so hot here in Arizona. I have to actually think about that. So I think that this is a good direction. Um, does anyone actually have any vintage dirndls? Like I'm, I've been looking and I cannot find any in my size and it's a little discouraging, but I'm so lucky that I know how to sew because I am just going to take on this project and you know, be making them. Now, if you are enjoying this video, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It helps me out a bunch. Um, and if you really like what's happening and haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can hit the bell notification next to it to let you get informed when I upload a new video, which is every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you really like what's going on and would like to help me produce more content just like this, you can follow the link below to my Patreon and become a patron where you get exclusive content and help me decide what goes into these videos and onto all of my social media. Thank you all so much for watching. Like I said, I'm Severely Mame, and I will see you next week.